you have your Bibles, turn with me to Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, we will be observing the Lord's Supper at the end of our service. And we're not doing it as a PS or a tag thing, okay? We are doing it last because I believe we need to prepare our hearts and our minds for taking the Lord's Supper. And I want to talk to you today about true worship. There's a difference in worship and true worship. And I think you'll see it in Scripture today. Three of the gospel writers speak of this story. And I could have chosen any of the three, but I have not preached from this text on this sermon that I have here for you. And I want to go ahead and give you the outline to the sermon true worship. If you have a program there and want to follow along with us, I want you to see these three things in Scripture. Number one, the expression of worship. The expression of worship. Folks, Jesus and God is worthy of our worship. The evidence of worship. You're not proving anything to anyone here today. Matter of fact, I don't even want you to think about anybody here today. I don't want you to compare to anybody today. I want you to draw a circle around your own life and your own walk with the Lord. And folks, we should have a goal in our lives is to please God in everything we do. And we express that. There is evidence of that in our lives. Number three, the example of worship. I will show you two examples of true worship today. One is Mary, Mary, who uh, we'll be speaking of, Mary of Bethany. And then the other one is Jesus. Jesus set the prime example of not just what worship should be, but what we should be doing, the application of the worship that we have in our lives. Mark 14, we'll begin reading in verse 1. Half of the Gospel of Mark deals with the last week of Jesus' life. The suffering and death and burial and resurrection of Jesus are the core of our Christian faith. The religious leaders now wanted Jesus dead. They were tired of him preaching. They did not believe his miracles. And they sure did not believe that he was the Messiah, the Son of God. The Passover was the Jewish festival where they celebrated Uh, the death angel passing over the homes of the Israelites uh, when all the firstborns of the Egyptians died. A lamb was to be sacrificed and eaten eaten that night. The Feast of Unleavened Bread followed the Passover and lasted seven days. The religious leaders wanted to wait until after these celebrations because thousands of people would be in Jerusalem and it could cause a riot. They decided to begin to plot to kill Jesus. And one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, would take the bait and sell out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And again, I want to say this as we begin. The Lord's Supper is the highest and ultimate act of true worship between God and his people. What we will be doing should not be taken lightly or flippantly We need to examine ourselves. 1 Corinthians, Paul said that. I judge no person of anything. What you do in in, in your life is between you and God. But again, if you wait and say, I don't want to say, folks, none of us are worthy. If if you're trying to, you know, do that, none of us are worthy of it. But if we will confess our sins, if we will cry out to God, if we will do business with God, I always give an invitation before we observe the Lord's Supper. And that is so that you can get your heart right with God. And the advantage I have is because all week long I've known what I was going to preach on. I've been in this scripture every day this week. And I have an advantage, and I'm just simply saying, would you consider your relationship with God before we partake of the Lord's Supper? And if you think about the Christmas season Uh, The first act of worshiping Jesus is found in Matthew 2. 
Look back at Matthew 2. I just want to read this as an introduction before we get going. Matthew 2, verse 9. Again, again you know uh, the wise men were hunting Jesus, and Herod uh, was wanting to find Jesus also, but not for the same reason. And verse 9 says, And when they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And again, we should have both of these things when we talk about the Lord's Supper, okay? We should have repentive hearts, repentive hearts, but we also should have joy knowing that Jesus provided eternal life for you and I. Verse 11, and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. Folks, I pray that in your mind and in your heart of hearts today, you will fall down and worship our Lord and Savior. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And folks, I don't believe... And, and again, I'm all for presents. I put up lights this week. I'm going to eat Christmas candy from now till the 25th. But I believe the treasures that were given in this case, the gifts, were to uh, fund Joseph and Mary to help them survive the next year and, and their trip to, to Egypt uh, to avoid uh, Herod knowing where they are. So let's look at Mark 1. Verse, Mark 14, verse 1, the expression of worship. After two days, it was Passover. And again, the Passover uh, was uh, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. On the first day and the eighth day, you were not to do any work during that time. And it was the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might take him by trickery and put him to death. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, being in Bethany, and Bethany was the home of Mary and Lazarus and Martha. And, you know, uh, you know Jesus spent a lot of time with these three. Uh, he spent time with them personally and in their home. And uh, Mary, this Mary was the sister of uh, Lazarus and Martha. But at this particular time, the Bible says he was at the house of Simon the leper. And I think they mentioned that because he was hosting that, but also he was healed by Jesus of leprosy. And he sat at the table, and a woman came having an alabaster flax of very costly, a very costly oil, a spikenard, and she broke the flax and poured it on his head. I notice you can see this Mary of Bethany three times in scriptures, and all three times she is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Folks, we need to be at the feet of Jesus. We need to know him intimately. He needs to know us. He needs to be our best friend. And I understand Lori is my best friend. She really is. But I'm still saying spiritually, in connection, in relationship, we need to be at the feet of Jesus. And she had an alabaster flask. And uh, this particular perfume, it was worth a year's wages. Okay, folks, you do the math today. You look at your income for what you have made in 2020, and it would be as if you took every penny you made this year and gave it to Jesus. And again, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just trying to get you to compare how deeply Mary loved Jesus, how it was more than a casual friendship, how Mary had sold her life out, and she was with Jesus and she uh, matter of fact if you remember the story Martha was in the kitchen cooking and and she got upset with Mary because she didn't want to help cook she didn't want to help serve not because she was being lazy but because she was in the presence of God she was with Jesus 
And today, that is one thing I want you to do through this story and through the Word of God. Be in the presence of God. Folks, He's here. I can sense His presence here in a mighty way. And one of the reasons we haven't done the Lord's Supper is twofold. One is uh, because we can't do it the regular way. You cannot healthily put your hands in where bread is and, and people pour the juice and everybody get juice out. Well, you can't do that. And then when we decided early, it's been three or four months ago that we said, let's, try, let's go back to the one way we did it. Not that this will be a permanent thing. It's just that the way we did it today was for your health and to ensure your safety. The people that put the cups in the bags, they had gloves on, they had sanitized their hands, all right? They did it for your safety. And us today, even with, and, and I know some of you probably won't agree with us, all right? But you have to take the mask off for just a few minutes, just a few minutes, all right, to partake of the Lord supper mary was so in love with jesus and her love was so strong that she didn't care about the cost her soul was uh, being given to jesus she didn't care what others thought mary's soul focused in that room was on jesus and folks we should always give our best to jesus not leftovers but our best philippians 2 Go with me to Philippians 2. God and Jesus is worthy of our worship. Philippians 2, verse 9. Philippians 2, 9 says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, of those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, folks, today I pray that you will come to the feet of Jesus today, that you will look at your life and look at Jesus' life and reflect on what Jesus has done for you. He is truly worthy of our worship, and we can express that that gratitude, that love, that thankfulness in the way we partake of the Lord's Supper. So we see the expression of worship, but I want you to see also the evidence of worship, the evidence. There were two kinds of worship going in that room. And folks, just, become, just because you come to church doesn't mean you're worshiping. And I'm not chiding you. I'm just saying your total focus today, and it should be every Sunday, folks, is on Jesus, on Jesus. Verse 4, but there were some who were indignant among themselves. And he is talking about the disciples. Some of the disciples had an attitude. Listen to me, folks. When it comes to evidence of worship, attitude is everything. It's everything to how you worship. Folks, I have said it earlier and I'll say it again. I judge no man on how they worship. But I'm only trying to get you to focus today on the Lord's Supper and what Jesus has done for you. Mary was totally focused on Jesus. And my prayer that today you will be too. But there were men in that room, disciples in that room, and said, why this freight why was this fragrant oil wasted? Folks, is it wasted to pour and anoint Jesus Christ, the Savior? Is it wasted to give of your substance to God the Father? Is it wasted to express yourself in love and devotion? Mary was doing what the Holy Spirit told her her to do yet there were men in the room that just didn't get it and thought it was a waste of time and all the writers that i have read this week basically agreed it was judas was the one who who said these particular words why because he was the treasure because the more money he kept the more money he would have for himself folks worship has nothing to do with self it is self I love our worship and praise time. I've heard many of the singers in practice even pray 
Lord, it's not about us. God, use us for your honor and glory. Folks, this day is not about me and how I present it. I'm only telling you and sharing with you what the Word of God says. So please, have the right attitude. Do not be like them. And folks, they could even spiritualize it. Because on the eve of the Passover, that was one of the things that the Jews did. They found a needy family, and they would eat, feed that needy family or help them with their needs. That is a good thing. But he is saying that's not the point here. That's not the point here. Verse 5, For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. Why do you give exact amounts? Because you want somebody to know how much it costs. Folks, I hope you don't give Christmas gifts and say, hey, that set me back $200. You know what you just did? You just took your blessing away. And Judas was more concerned about the money in the bag than the, the seed that was in his heart. Folks, we are all sinners. We are all we have all fallen from grace. And if it wasn't for the mercy of God, we would be lost today. We would be bound for hell today. We would not know Jesus Christ as our per personal Lord and Savior. And I guess the verse that kills me, and I've read it this week two or three times, the Scripture says it would have been better if Judas had not even been born. Gosh, church think about that think about the lostness of mankind thinking about think about what's so important even in america what do we what do we worship sometimes the almighty dollars oh folks let's put those things down today let's worship the creator of this universe let's worship the god that created us personally and said you were beautifully and wonderfully made Let's worship the Jesus Christ that died on the cross and was beaten in his hands and side, torn, and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Folks, he died for Judas. He died for Judas. Later on, we're going to go to the foot washing. He washed Judas's feet. Folks, I'm telling you, none of us deserve it but we have to guard our attitude it wasn't a waste of money it was mary giving her best to jesus and they added this last line and they criticized her sharply folks man's going to criticize you people are going to say things that aren't true about you people are going to judge you folks they did jesus that way don't respond don't let it discourage you. Keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your focus on the Word of God. Worship is a spirit. Worship is the Holy Spirit. And the most important thing for us to do today is stay in tune with God through the Holy Spirit. Turn to, with me to John chapter 4. John 4. John 4, and we'll start in verse 19. John 4, 19, the longest conversation Jesus had with, any, with anyone is a woman at the well. And we know the story and all that went going on. She was thinking of water, water that you draw from the well. Jesus was talking about spiritual water. Jesus told her and showed her her sins. And then the woman in verse 19 said unto him, talking to Jesus, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. All right, just talking to him, she knew he was the Son of God. I didn't say she had accepted him yet, but she knew there was something different about him. The thing that I noticed in these next five verses, the word worship is used ten times in five verses. Ten times. Look at this. <coughs> Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. 
Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you neither uh, on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Folks, it's nice to come to worship. I love to come to worship. But Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit is everywhere. We can worship him anywhere we are. Verse 22, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. And he wasn't putting down uh, the Gentile mountain or the Gentile temple. He was simply saying, you're not getting it. I am the one you should be worshiping. I have come to save your life. But the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. Two things that it takes to have true worship. One is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And it's here, folks. And truth is truth of the Word of God. And that's why I'm trying to share this with you today. Because it, it is truth from the Word of God. And it says... But the hour is coming in true worship, and, and the Father is seeking uh, such to worship him. True worship, do it in spirit and truth, and the Father is speaking to, or, or seeking uh, people to worship him. Verse 24, God is a spirit, and who worship him, worship him, or must worship him in spirit and in truth. So I pray today that you will call upon two things. One is the Holy Spirit of God. Even now as I speak, would you call on the Holy Spirit and say, God, help me to focus today. Help me to focus on God the Father who created everything. On Jesus the Son who died on the cross for my sins and the Holy Spirit who is in my life. Help me to stay focused. Help me to worship you in spirit and in truth so we see the example of worship or excuse me the expression of worship the evidence of worship and the example of worship look back in our text but jesus said and said it said let her alone let her alone what was the disciples doing or judas also they were they were picking on her okay they were trying to point out her sin and folks it is not a sin to worship god it's not a sin to give your best to god they did not understand what was going on and jesus was taking up for her jesus simply said leave her alone why do you trouble her she has done a good work for me now folks i'm telling you Focus on Jesus. The rest of the time we're here, focus on Jesus. Verse 7, for you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do them good. You know what he was really saying? Why didn't you do it during the week? Why haven't you earlier this month given something? Why haven't you taken care of that? They did not get what was going on. But Jesus did, and Jesus chided his disciples for that. But me, you do not always have. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. What was she doing? Folks, it's like sending flowers after someone dies. What do they do? One week later, they're dead. Okay, the flowers are dead. We need to send flowers today. You may need to get on the phone tomorrow and send somebody flowers while they're alive. It is a memorial. Folks, this service is a memorial service for Jesus. He has already died. He has already shed his blood. He has already taken that beating that he has taken for you and I. And that's what the memorial is. It is a reminder of the bread, which is his body broken for you. And of the cup, his blood that was shed for you. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached, in the whole world, these are Jesus' words. What this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. What is the memorial? 
after she is dead and gone. I believe even one of the disciples later on said, you would not believe what this lady did. She took a year's wages of perfume. I was there. I saw what she did. She broke it and poured it on Jesus as a gift, as a memorial, anointing his body because she knew she didn't have much time left with Jesus. And if you actually do the math and all that is going on here, folks, Jesus was in the last week. This was the beginning. This particular thing was the beginning of Jesus' last life here on earth. So we see the example of worship in Mary. But I want to see you, I want you to see one more example of Jesus. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. We don't have time to read the whole chapter, but you know what was going on. The disciples were coming in and Jesus took a towel and he wrapped this towel around him and as each of the disciples came in, he did what a slave person would do. He would take the feet and put them in a basin and he would wash their feet. And folks, you have to understand, they, they all wore sandals in those days. The roads were not paved. They were dusty, and so they were grimy and dirty, and it was a dirty, you know, job. It was a filthy job. And he was going around, and even Peter just said, hey, you're not washing my feet, folks. I'm just telling you that's pride is all that is. Jesus is in control. Wherever he is, he is in control. Even his own mother said, whatever Jesus says to do, just do it. And folks, I'm telling you, Peter, and then uh, Jesus rebuked him and he washed all of their feet. Now look at verse 12. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? Folks, what was he doing? He was setting an example. He was setting an example. You call me teacher and Lord, and I say you well, for so I am. If then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. Folks, Jesus is the perfect example. That's why and I tell this to children, I tell this to youth, but I am telling it to adults also. WWJD, what would Jesus do if you would just ask yourself in every situation of your life what would Jesus do you would do the right thing for I've given you an example verse 15 that you should do as I have done to you most assuredly I say to you a servant is not greater than a master nor is he who is sent greater than those than he who sent him if you know these things blessed are you if you do them. Folks, we're talking about deity here. We're talking about the Son of God. And he showed an example of servanthood, being a servant. Folks, what a servanthood today is, we are God's hands, we are God's feet, and we are God's mouth. We are here to serve, to serve show people maybe how spiritual we are. That's not the point of worship. It's to show people how great God is. It is show people the way to the cross, the way to salvation, the way to be saved. So the application today as we close, I want to admonish you between now and Christmas to serve others the way Mary served Jesus. Jesus set the example. But give of your best to God in Jesus. I wrote down just a few ways. The Lottie Moon Missions offering is a way you can serve. The Gideon Bible Ministry is a way you can serve. The Emergency Children's Shelter is a way you can serve. An Angel Tree is a way you can serve. The Women Crisis Center. And I'm not just picking these out. I'm just helping you understand 
That is what we need to be doing during this Christmas season. We need to be giving God in service. So as we finish here, I just want to say, as you prepare your hearts for the Lord's Supper and a time of invitation, I want to say this to everyone in the building and to everyone that is listening to me today. As your pastor, if I have offended you in any way, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I did not mean to do it. I'm sorry if I have offended you. I want to be right with God. I want to be right with my fellow man. I want to be right with my family as we observe the Lord's Supper. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for this example of Mary. God, she didn't care who was in the room. She didn't care about the price of the gift. Her total focus was on Jesus Christ. And God, I pray that we would have that same example in our lives. God, I'm sorry where I have failed you. I'm sorry where I have let you down. God, thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your broken body that was given for all of us. Thank you for your blood which was shed for all of us. And God, I pray that if there's one here under the sound of my voice that doesn't know you, that has never put their faith and trust in Christ, today would be their day of salvation. God, we love you, God. We thank you. God, we praise you. We worship you. God, I just pray that there would be just that spirit of worship in our observance of the Lord's Supper. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?